Authorities say Gregory Scarpa made his reputation as a member of a powerful crime family living in the shadow of death and violence. But he met his match when he confronted one killer that didn't carry a gun. What followed was a death sentence. But as Harold Dow tells us, this one wasn't a deterrent to crime. Some are calling it instead a license to kill. For the last year and a half, there has been a bloody gangland war being fought on the streets of Brooklyn, New York. So far, at least 13 members of the Colombo crime family have been murdered. Another 16 barely escaped with their lives. Law enforcement authorities say the violence began as a power play to replace former Colombo boss Carmine the Snake Persico, who is now serving 100 years in prison. From, I guess, November the 18th until... Uh basically early January, uh, there was this shooting war. Charles Hines is yeah, Brooklyn's district attorney. I mean, I have no problem letting these folks uh, blow each other away. It's, I think it's good for us, um, uh, ultimately. The problem is, uh, you know, most of them don't get annual firing practice, you know, so when they start shooting at each other, they begin to miss, and they, they end up uh, killing uh, innocent people. Hines says that when an innocent victim was gunned down last November in what he called a mob-controlled bagel shop, something had to be done. What we did was, uh, uh, on my orders, we served grand jury subpoenas on 41 Colombo uh, associates, capos, and soldiers. Uh, it stopped the war because when they're under subpoena, they can't shoot. They all hide, you know. They, they watch too many, I think, Class C movies. But authorities say there is one man they couldn't stop, a man considered the most feared of Carmine Persico's allies, a man who police say is probably responsible for escalating the Colombo War. His name is Gregory Scarpa, seen here in a 1986 police surveillance tape. Law enforcement uh, sources have identified him over the years as a uh, capo regime, uh, top lieutenant in the, uh, the Colombo crime family. Police sources claim Scarpa not only directed some of the mob killings, but committed at least two of the murders himself. Uh, ordinarily, it'd be very unusual for a cop to shoot. I mean, he would have uh, any number of people um, that he could he could uh, direct um, uh, hits to carry out a shooting. Yes, yeah, sure. But it's unusual for a cop yeah, to do that. And the reason police say this capo began to shoot is even more unusual. For this is what Gregory Scarpa looks like today. His body ravaged by AIDS. His doctors have given him only months to live. This is the hand that was dealt to me. I'll play the hand. If I could outbluff the opponent, which is death, fine. If I can't, I lose the hand. Last summer, Scarpa showed up in a courtroom in Brooklyn, New York, just long enough to receive a cash settlement from the hospital he says gave him an AIDS-infected blood transfusion during an operation for a bleeding ulcer. I think it was about like five or six donations that were used. One of them was HIV infected. His blood wasn't tested and uh, I received that blood. When we chat a little bit we'll talk about uh, maybe some of the feelings you have now and, and uh, what changes you may have gone through. It's rare for an accused mobster to sit down for an interview, but on this day, Gregory Scarpa wanted to send a message to his friends and to his enemies that he would not surrender to AIDS. I will show them the cards that I've displayed all this time, the bravado. I will show them that, hey, this is still me. There isn't anything on earth that I will hide from or back up from. And I certainly won't do it with this either. Police say Scarpa had been true to his word. A few days after our conversation, he was arrested and charged with two murders and the conspiracy to commit two more, all within the last year. Authorities have speculated that uh, because Gregory Scarpa has AIDS, that he used AIDS as a license to kill. From what I know, that's very, very true. He was dying. He wanted to settle scores himself. Nothing for him to lose. This man, a high-level member of the Colombo crime family, agreed to speak to Street Stories on the condition that we conceal his identity and change his voice. And even though he has AIDS and 
admits himself that he's close to death, you still fear him? Even now? Until he's in the ground, and maybe afterwards, too. Really? Sure. Oh, yeah. They're no candy store gangsters, I'll tell you that much. According to Justice Department documents, an informant named Joseph Ambrosino says Scarper personally committed at least two murders. One, the shooting of a mobster named Larry Lampisi, and the other, the shotgun murder of Nick Granzio, to whom Scarper allegedly said before firing, this one's from Carmine. A few weeks after his arrest, Scarper's attorney was able to get him transferred from prison to a nearby hospital and then released on bail. The allegations that uh, were laid out by uh, the informant are total and complete allegations. Uh, they're totally and completely false. This fella, Joe, Joseph Ambrosini, is, uh, is a person that, uh, that I wouldn't even allow myself to talk to. Who is uh, Ambrosino? He worked for Scarpa. Whatever Scarpa told him to do, he would do. They were very close. He was there. Let them charge him with the uh, murders, not me, because I wasn't. Authorities have a theory that Gregory Scarpa got AIDS, and he used AIDS as a license to kill. Uh, if I'm if I'm to uh, be what they allege me to be, why do I need AIDS to be that way? Uh, I could be that way without having AIDS. Today, Gregory Scarpa is under house arrest and under 24-hour surveillance. He's facing two murder charges and a death sentence from AIDS. But Scarpa intends to stay tough until the end. It's a killer. No question about it. It's a killer, and I accept it. Maybe I'll get lucky and get a heart attack and not die of the AIDS virus. Heart attack, bango. It's all over. While Gregory Scarpa continues his battle with AIDS, another battle rages. In the last six weeks, there have been six shootings in what police say is the continuing Colombo crime war. 